In topic nine, we're going to look at how to partition a segment. So partitioning a segment is basically meaning that we can divide a segment into um, different pieces. So what they're going to do, if you look at this example here, we have point P partitions this line segment AB with these endpoints into this ratio of one to three. So that means we need to take this segment, so we start with some segment, and we need to break this up into a ratio of 1 to 3. So that means we need to have four parts total, so that we have one part to three parts. So basically, you have to divide your segment into four equal pieces. And when we look at it, we have to look at point P being this spot right here because at that spot I'll have a 1 to 3 ratio. So I have one part to three parts. So you can do this on the graph. Um, so like if I look at these points here, so I have negative 2, negative 5, so 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then I have 6, 1, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up 1. Basically, what I'm going to do is I need to find point P, which will be closer to A, so that I have this in a 1 to 3 ratio. So what you want to do is, again, you want to look at what's that horizontal change, what's the vertical change. So how did I get from A to B? So if you look, I had to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units up. And then over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So if I have four parts, that means I need to divide each of these by four. So instead of moving up 6 over 8, or instead of finding the midpoint, which we did in the last video, up 3 over 4, half of these, I have to go divide these by four because I have four parts. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up so instead of up 6, I'm going to divide 6 by 4, which will give me up 1.5. And then instead of right 8, I'm going to divide that by 4, which will tell me to go right 2. So we're going to go up 1.5, and, and then over 1, 2. Up 1.5, over 1, 2. Up 1.5, over 1, 2 up one and a half over one two should get you back to the other endpoint and we know because of this ratio of one to three p has to be this coordinate right here so zero comma one two three point five so if this were different if this were two to three then i'd be looking at this point here or not two to three but if it were like two to two i would be looking at this point if it were three to one i'd be looking at this point because you have to look at how many parts to how many parts is what you're comparing so let me show you how to do this algebraically though because most of the time you're not going to get numbers that work out this nice so you do have to um, do this algebraically so basically what i'm going to do it's going to be similar to those midpoint problems so I'm going to start with my coordinates, A and B. And then what I'm going to do is I created this picture so that I have 1 to 3 is my ratio. So P will be the first point that I find, or the first point between A and B. Then I'll have these other points between A and B. So basically I'm going to have three points between A and B. So in order to figure out the coordinates of these, so this one's going to be P, because remember we want P so that it's a 1 to 3 ratio. And then these ones, I don't, I didn't put special names by them, but you can if you wanted to. You can call them whatever you want. Um, but basically what I need to do is I need to look at how did I go from this X value to this X value here. So how did I go from negative 2 to 6? Well, I went right 8, which is the same thing as saying plus and then from here, negative 5 to 1, well, how did I go from negative 5 to 1? Well, I had to go um, up 6 or add 6 to my y value. So then what this becomes is the change in x, so the, the change, the delta in x, so how I traveled from x was 8. 
So plus 8 is how I went from A to B. But since I have four parts, remember, I really need to divide that number by 4 to figure out what do I need to do to each of these individual points. So each of these individual points, I actually have to add 2. So I would add 2, I get 0. Add 2 again, you get 2. Add 2 again, you get 4. And then you add 2 to this last one, you should always get back to B. So basically, each change in X is going to be 2, which is what I did here. I moved right 2. So then we do the same thing for Ys. So the change in Ys from A to B was plus 6. But since I had 4 parts, I have to divide that by 4. So the change in Y was really add 1 and a half, 1.5. So you add 1.5 we get negative 3.5, add 1.5 to that value, and you get negative 2, add 1.5 again, we get negative 0.5, add 1.5 again, and you get back to 1. So this same process will always be used. The only difference is in this case, I'm trying to find the ratio from 1, so 1 to 3. So when I look for my final answer, it's going to occur at this first point that I found because I need to split the segment so that it's 1 part to 3 parts. So P, the coordinates of P, are going to be 0, comma, negative 3.5. So you do not have to show both sets of work, so algebraic and graphically. You would only have to do one, which algebraic is really going to be the way to go with these because you're going to get messy numbers and it won't always work on a graph. So let's do one more example and for this one we are just going to do this one algebraically. So I'm starting with this segment. So I have a segment. So always draw out a picture first so that you can envision it. So I have segment AB and I need to divide this so I need to find point P so that it partitions this segment into the ratio of 3 to 2. So we have five parts here, since it's a 3 to 2 ratio. So let's go ahead and divide this into five parts. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So do your best to try to make them look even. So basically we know that P has to occur after three parts. So 1, 2, 3 is where P will be. So I'm looking at here's three parts here to two parts on this side. So that means when I go to find these coordinates, I'm going to find the first point, the second point, and the third point will actually be my P, and then the fourth point um, will also be in there. So I'm going to start by writing my coordinates. So I have 3, 4, and then give yourself enough space to include those coordinates between. So B is going to be 6, 10. And then, again, set this up so we have four points that have to go in between here so that we have five parts. So we're going to have one, two, three, four between these. And the important coordinate is going to be our number three coordinate here. That's going to be point P. And to start this, you have to figure out, well, how did I go from the x value of a to the x value of b? So 3 plus what gave me 6? Well, 3 plus 3. So that means my change in x was plus 3, and I have to divide that by the 5 parts so that I can figure out, well, what am I going to add to each of these? So 3 divided by 5 is going to be 0.6. It's probably easier to get these as decimals than it is to deal with fractions. You could leave it as fractions, though. And then I'm going to add that to each piece. So plus 0 0.6, I get 3.6. And I'm going to add 0 0.6 to that. I get 4.2. Add 0 0.6 to that. You get 4.8. Add 0 0.6 to this one. We get 5.4. Add 0 0.6 again. You should get 6. So then we do the same process but to the y's. So how did I go from... 4 to 10, well, I added 6, so the change in y's is 6, but I have to divide that by the 5 parts that I need. So this is 1.2 when you divide it. 
So you're going to add 1.2 to each piece. So I get 5.2. Add 1.2 again. You get 6.4. So 6.4, add 1.2 again, we get 7.6, add 1.2 again, you get 8.8, .8. add it again, you should get 10. So then your answer is where P occurs, so P is 4.8 comma 7.6. And this would be one that would be really hard to do on a graph because you'd be counting um, right 0.6 and up 1.2, which would just be a pain. So that's why you definitely have to know how to do this one algebraically.